Okay. Good afternoon, everybody. It's uh, it's one o'clock. This is a, a hastily called emergency meeting of the uh, town council of the town of Fort Myers Beach. It's, uh, again, it's one o'clock, and we'll start as always with the pledge of allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God. Indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. Uh, First of all, I want to thank my uh, fellow council members for uh, for being here today on such short notice. That's not always uh, easy to uh, change schedules and so forth, but here we are. Uh, we're here to discuss a couple of items uh, that we've put on our agenda. Uh, I think before we get into that, we'll, uh, we'll take public comment, if there are people here from the uh, public who would like to, uh, to comment. Madam Clerk, do we have a list going? Yes, or? Mayor. My first request is from Jackie Lisak. Okay. Good morning, Council and Town Staff. Jackie Lisak, for the record, President and CEO of the Fort Myers Beach Chamber of Commerce. Uh, yesterday afternoon, the Chamber Board of Directors met in an emergency meeting to discuss potential closures for the upcoming holiday weekend and put together the following statement that I'd like to read for you. Each of the council members have received this, so has the town manager, but I'd like it entered into public record. Good evening, Town Council and Mr. Hernstedt. The Fort Myers Beach Chamber Board of Directors held a late afternoon meeting to discuss the potential restrictions and or beach closure for the upcoming 4th of July weekend. The Board was informed of the various actions taken this week by surrounding communities due to concerns over the spread of COVID during the upcoming holiday weekend. After discussion and the sharing of information, the Fort Myers Beach Board of Directors feels strongly that the beaches of Fort Myers Beach should not be closed to residents and guests this holiday weekend. The board feels that completely closing the Fort Myers Beach beaches would result in its residents and guests crowding into enclosed spaces, pool decks, and patios, which could result in a greater transmission of the COVID virus. They also feel that the closure of our beaches would result in a high number of cancellations, which would negatively impact the already stressed businesses on our island. The board does, however, feel that certain precautions should be put in place to protect both people and business. <laughs> The board would like to suggest and recommend the following action items. Number one, follow the governor's order that was issued on June 26, 2020, that further regulated the businesses. Number two, require all residents and guests and businesses to follow the COVID CDC guidelines, both indoors and outdoors. Number three, so strongly suggest or require at the board's discretion the use of masks indoor. Number four, significantly increase the police presence throughout the weekend asking them to patrol beaches and businesses, reminding patrons and businesses of proper social distance requirements. Number five, utilize the town's beach patrol and code enforcement to encourage and adhere to CDC guidelines, the governor's order, and social distance recommendations. Number six, close all town of Fort Myers Beach public parking in the downtown district area. Number seven, leave town parking at beach accesses down the island open in order to encourage visitors to spread out across the island. Number eight, place signage at the base of the North and South Bridges stating that town public parking in the downtown area is closed. Number nine, make suggestions effective, make these suggestions effective both on Saturday and Sunday, July 4th and July 5th. Board of the Fort Myers Beach Chamber of Commerce would like you to know that they appreciate your time, effort, and dedication to service during this pandemic. Would also like you to know that they and the chamber will support you and the difficult decisions that you will make. Thank you for your time and attention to this difficult subject, and we look forward to working with you to make our residents, businesses, and guests know that there is no better, safer place than to be on Fort Myers Beach, Florida. Respectfully, Jackie Lezak, President and CEO. Thank you very much for your time, and we appreciate what you're all doing today. Thank you very much, Jackie. I have no other requests. Um, okay. Well, then we'll, we'll close public comment. Frankly, I expected more than that, but... Uh, Received so many uh, via email and text over the past yeah. week or so. I believe we have that. Oh, yes. Step right up. Since I'm so close to this thing, um, you can Kathy remove Wallace, while you can so remove while you're when you speak. Kathy Wallace. Um, yeah, Kathy. I'm just pushing for the mask. I compare it. 
the requirement for the mask. Um, you know, going in public times a week, always covered up. Visitors from all over the world are still coming down. The entire family is not wearing a mask. I don't say anything. Some of the children point to my mask, just wave. Occasionally, I've said something to a mother. Um, I consider it just as important as going to a restaurant. No, I must have shoes. I must have a shirt for health and safety. I must have a mask. Health and safety. It's a simple thing to do. Everyone, everyone won't do it, but if people know that's a requirement, I would, even if I'm doing it anyway. Thank you. Thanks, Kathy. I think we'll also be discussing masks at some point today. Anyone else care to speak? Hearing none, and there's no one else out in the lobby, I presume, or anywhere else that wants to, uh, to speak. I don't want to cut anybody off. Okay, hearing none, we'll close the uh, public comment. I'll just uh, open up with a couple of uh, remarks here. Uh, I think everybody knows, uh, in light of uh, what's been going on here, I mean, you'd have to be living under a rock not to know what's going on in the state of Florida right now. Florida, it uh, doesn't matter what television station you listen to, whether it's red, blue, white, green, whatever, Florida has been described as the epicenter now of the pandemic. That's what they're calling us, the epicenter of the pandemic. So oh, that uh, with with that title that we have now, those, those that these are the times that we uh, we live in. In addition to being this uh, epicenter, cases have been uh, increasing exponentially around the state. Uh, I believe it's over thirty some odd thousand in the past week or so. Uh, we've fallen back from the daily rate from a few days ago, but uh, the numbers are still very high. Uh, locally, uh, in Lee County, the, uh, the numbers are rising, the uh, hospital admissions are up. Dr. Antonucci was on the television yesterday from uh, Lee Health, and uh, he reported that uh, the number of beds, while there are still beds available, are decreasing. It's only a matter of time before they fill and the ICU beds uh, start filling up. So, <clears throat> in addition to that, the, uh, the positivity rates here in Lee County are sky high. Uh, last week, uh, I don't know how many days ago now it is, but uh, we were number two in the state of Florida for positivity, only behind Osceola County. I don't know where that is today. But I know that the, uh, the positivity rates in Lee County and also South Florida are sky high compared to uh, the national numbers. So, with that all being said, the, the, uh, the counties on the east coast of Florida, in their wisdom, have closed their beaches. From Palm Beach County, Broward County, Miami-Dade County, to Monroe County, around the Horn of Florida, and up the West Coast, up to Collier County. Oh, all of the beaches in South Florida at this point are closed, or will be closed, except for Fort Myers Beach, where the lone holdout here, and the, ba and the beaches of Lee County. And, uh, and, and while Sanibel's may be open, they're, uh, they're virtually closed, uh, by the, uh, the parking situation that they've created over there. So, <clears throat> that's, uh, that's just a brief synopsis of where we are. That's, that's not news to any of you people, I'm sure. We've all been following that. But, uh, but that's where we are. Uh, the uh, people that have closed the beaches on the East Coast, um, it was mentioned here by one of our local commissioners that... Uh, that it was, uh, was the term he used. Well, I can't think of it at the moment, but uh, 
uh, oh, knee jerk, knee jerk was the, the reaction, and that, uh, that uh, he really didn't know why they were doing it. Well, I'm not a mind reader, and I don't know what the motivations are for the, uh, the county mayors on the east coast of Florida. I can only work under the assumption that they're closing their beaches down because they care about their people. I'm going to work on that assumption. So, uh, so I'm pretty sure that that's why they, uh, they did that. And, uh, and, and that's where we are today. We, uh, we're, I'm reminded, I have, I have two dogs at home. I have two, two bird dogs. One's name is Boudreaux and one's name is Thibodeau. Named after old friends of mine. From my friends up there, they're fond of saying around uh, Mardi Gras, les les bon temps roule. Let the good times roll. Let the good times roll. Well, that's the question that we're facing here now. It's Fort Myers Beach, lone beach in South Florida, are our arms wide open saying, come on, let the good times roll? Is that where we are? So that's, that's one of the questions that we'll have to answer today. And uh, if the answer is yes, then, uh, then how, how, how do we manage uh, such, a, uh, such a situation? Beaches on the East Coast, the counties, instead of working out some sort of manageable way where they could uh, open their, themselves partially, like has been proposed down in, uh, which is going to be in effect in uh, Collier County, they chose not to do any at all, but to have total closures over on the East Coast of Florida and Monroe County, thereby, thereby uh, making, decision, making the decision in the minds of the other people over there that want to to get out on a beach over the holiday weekend, where to find a beach. Again, at, at, the, uh, at the, uh, the risk of repeating myself, we're the only game in town, not only in this town, but in all of South Florida. Not Southwest Florida, South Florida. So that's where we are. That's where we are today. So I think I, what I'd like to do here this afternoon, fellow members, is to, to to get the discussion going here and see where see where we are as a council as to uh, as to how we, we wish to manage this. Um, you know, there's a lot of uh, we, we've we've all we've all been getting the uh, the the texts, the the emails from from the residents and from the businesses alike, range from close it down completely, don't touch anything, leave it wide open, and everything in between. So uh, we've got a lot of people here on the island who live here, the residents that we represent, that are very, very concerned about the, uh, the health ramifications of what's going on. On the other end of the spectrum, you have the business people who uh, have been hurt very much this year already by, uh, by not only the actions of the, uh, the world, of our actions locally that we've taken to uh, to curtail their business at times. So I understand their position as well. That, that's what we're faced with today, is the, is the question of, uh, of uh, whether we close this down completely or do we find some middle ground to appease both uh, groups of uh, constituencies and, uh, and get through this weekend and then uh, and then plan for Labor Day. <laughs> Get through this one and plan for the next one. So, that being said, I think I'll, I'd like to open it up here now to the council, and uh, we can, if we can, try to stay on this topic right now, the beach, and the weekend, and then maybe later we can move on to uh, maybe a discussion of masks, uh, maybe a discussion of uh, fireworks, or whatever else you all want to discuss as far as this. Uh, this uh, weekend goes. So, uh, I'm going to start on the uh, on the left side here with you, Bill Veach, Councilman Veach, and uh, uh, it's a, this is sort of a freewheeling discussion here. So, how about it? All right. Well, I, I I concur with what you said, Mayor. Um, I think that the way I see the situation is that the uh, the East Coast has closed their beaches. Um, Fourth of July is a big beach weekend, and from what I understand from local business people I've talked to. This is one of the weekends when we get a lot of people from the other coast anyway. 
Um, but now we're, we've limited more and more about where they can go. I heard the uh, Lee, County, Lee County mayor was quoted as saying that he thought East Coast was irresponsible for closing their beaches and sending everybody our way. Um, and, the, and the county has no plans to close beaches or beach parking that they have on the island. Um, this gives me a couple of real big concerns. First off, it seems like Lee County is, is hell-bent on trying to keep our town as open as possible during this. And with day trippers who come and, and give a great deal of exposure and don't really help our hotels and our restaurants um, that much, um, that gives me a great deal of concern. Um, I feel like we're, we're taking the brunt of, of South Florida's desire to be on the beach. Uh, it makes it the more people that we have on the island, the harder and harder it is to social distance. Um, and it isn't just the beaches because people come here, the hotels are full, the VR, a lot of the vacation rentals are full. Uh, this means people are going to be congregating in restaurants, um, around pools, um, everywhere else uh, on the island. So I, I do feel for the people that are already here, that are already booked, the combination of those people and the day trippers that Lee County is trying very hard to um, to send our way um, gives me a great deal of concern. Uh, I am a little torn, and also, you know, like you, like you guys, I've got the parade of emails. They came, um, started out as a, it's a fairly good flow and then just turned into a torrent. Um, I've gotten emails from people with pictures showing the lack of social distancing at, at certain establishments. And then I've gotten emails from the, the managers of those establishments saying how good they're doing at maintaining social distancing. So we all know, too, that enforcement is tricky because I, um, we don't have a great share of presence. Uh, number of, we, it's not like we can you know, mobilize 50, 50 members of the, uh, of the sheriff's department to, uh, to patrol. Um, it's not particularly safe for them to go and challenge everybody who is not social distancing. It puts them at risk. Um, so we're, we're not left with a whole lot of choices. I do feel for the businesses. I think that I know they've been through a hard time. Um, I think that it's been busy leading up to this weekend. It isn't just this weekend that's busy. Uh, from what I understand, there's been a pretty high occupancy in, in the last couple of weeks leading up to it. Um, so just do keep in mind that what they've done on the other coast um, and even, even in, on some of the adjacent counties to us and the areas around us, they haven't closed down for months or weeks, days. It's, it's to try to curtail the exodus from one coast over to here to fill our already busy beaches, restaurants, and other organizations. So I think we would be remiss if we did nothing. I think that um, I, would, I would much rather be working with the county as opposed to having the county dictate what they want us to do. Um, that bothers me a great deal because for me, I, I, uh, I agree with what Jackie said that um, the beach access parking is valuable and that it spreads people out over our seven miles seven mile island but that's a minor part of the parking that we have available for the public most of our parking is around downtown and around like lynn hall park where the county has a large parking lot and a tiny little beach park um i, I short of closing the beach if we can come away with a really limit parking um and do it effectively with not just public but private parking and try to make it so that the, the beach is not easily accessible to people who just want to come down uh, for a brief period of time and, uh, and, and, and flood the beach. So that's my initial thoughts. Thank you, Bill. Councilman Erdholt. Well, I appreciate the opportunity to speak. I, I, since there's not a motion before us, I, I'll try to be brief. Uh, watch the governor's press conference on Sunday live for an hour, uh, surrounded by doctors up in Northwest Florida. Uh, there was no sense of panic uh, from either the governor or the doctors. Uh, he went through all the data. Uh, there is a surge, primarily younger folks, primarily asymptomatic. Uh, again, manageable in terms of the influx to the hospitals, which has always been a primary concern of health care professionals. Um, hasn't occurred yet. Uh, I noticed the other day Lee County or Lee Health announced they're, they're by the way the largest employer in Lee County. They announced massive layoffs and a four to six week offer to take the summer off. Uh, it's a strange message coming from our medical professionals, uh, particularly at Lee Health, uh, given given the the angst that we're all supposed to be in over this crisis. Uh, I I think and I've said this before. 
I, I think that the largest contributor uh, to negative health outcomes, I think it remains to be so today, is not the COVID, which is real and, and certainly a threat, but it's poverty. And the economic hardship that the folks are going through, not just in Lee County, but throughout Florida, throughout this country, uh, is causing suicide, depression, mental health issues, domestic violence, drug and alcohol abuse. These folks are losing their employer-sponsored health insurance. They're going bare with no insurance. I'm a former state insurance commissioner. That bothers me a lot. They're fearful to go to their doctors because of the climate of fear that's been generated. They're not getting their elective surgeries. They're not getting their preventative care done. And this is causing serious health outcomes that haven't even been measured, and there's no metric available today to, to measure it. I just I throw that out there just to provide a little balance. I respect my colleagues who've, who, in their comments thus, thus far. I just I think we need to keep a, have a little bit broader, uh, take a broader look at this. Uh, in this situation today, I mean, if, if we're going to do this this weekend, at least in terms of what's been preliminary, prelimin, prim, prim, discussed thus far, <laughs> is uh, the hotels and the short-term rentals are already full. So are we, are we going to shut down our whole island because, or shut down the beaches because folks are going to drive two hours from Miami for just the day and then drive home? That seems odd to me uh, and maybe a little overreactive. Um, have a county beach that's going to remain open? Are we going to have a line of demarcation between the town beach and the county beach with armed guards, making sure one side doesn't cross to the other? Are we going to then, by closing our beaches, compact all these folks into the county beach area if we're concerned about public health? That doesn't seem like a wise uh, course of action. I think there's a lot of questions. I have a lot of concerns. I think. Uh, our businesses, particularly our hotels, have done a very uh, responsible, uh, have taken a responsible course of action in terms of put, taking the appropriate precautions. The restaurants have, have, have done yeoman's work. Yeah, there are outliers, there, there are bad actors. As I said before, I don't think we should be fashioning our public policy based upon a few rogue actors. That's, that's where enforcement could come in. Um, so I just, I, I, I just encourage us to take a pause uh, and, and just be reflective of the broader dynamics in play here, not just the COVID piece, but the impact of our actions, potential actions, and how, and how they will impact folks and public health in the bigger picture as well. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Tim. Ms. Mayor. Uh, I guess the first thing I'd like to do is thank everybody for their emails. And I'd like to let everybody know that it is normally my practice that I answer about 95% of the emails that I get. Uh, the small percentage that I don't answer are usually people who have been insulting to me. <laughs> but uh, I was unable in this past day to answer all of the emails because we literally received um, yes. dozens and dozens of emails. Um, I apologize that I could not personally respond to each one of those. Uh, this is a very difficult question. I have thought about it extensively. And one of the things that I try to do when I am faced with a dilemma like this is to step back and look at <clears throat> what can we do. Um, we got a lot of emails from people with suggestions about things that are not within the power of this town council. We cannot stop people at the bridge and check their IDs. Um, we can't close the bridges. There's so many things that we cannot do, we don't have the power to do them. Uh, then there are things that we could do, but feasibly really wouldn't work. That leaves us with a small selection of possibilities. Um, the part of the beach that we do control is the beach accesses on the south end of the island. And I thought seriously about whether we should limit access to those or close down the parking, whatever. Um, the more I thought about that, the less sense it made. Uh, because of the fact that our commissioners have failed to act uh, to assist us in this uh, crisis, uh, we, are, we are stuck with the, with, that, with the fact that the majority of the public beach uh, land where people go to are the county beaches. 
And if we close our few beach accesses, then everybody's going to crowd down there, which doesn't make any sense to me. So I am left with the feeling that our hands are tied and there isn't a great deal that we can do to make this situation better because of the fact that the county is not working with us. Councilman Allers. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, I also want to thank uh, all the people that sent us the emails, as they have said <laughs> four times now. We've, we've had several of them. I've done my best to reply back to as many as I can. Uh, there's also the people that are here that, that, that did speak and, and, and have spoken about it. Um, it's, in, it's very important to me to get those emails because it, it helps me make decisions when I know where our constituents are, what they're saying, what they're thinking. Um, at the end of the day, we do work for you. So your input is very valid and very, very important. So I thank you for that. You know, over this whole COVID thing, there's plenty of information out there that <clears throat> that now, depending on what side you are, whether you think it's it's a farce or you think it's the end of the world as we know it, there's plenty of information out there for you to to draw whatever conclusion your your desire is, whatever side of the fence you're on. So I, I didn't want to focus so much on that as I did as to to how we got to where we're at. We're all concerned, of, you know, about our citizens. We're all concerned about our business. We're all concerned about the people that are coming over here and, and where they're going or what they could potentially be taking back from here. But the fact that we're reacting to what other entities have done gives me a little concern. If, if indeed that we were this concerned about this weekend, we had plenty of time to be one of the first people to talk about closing down the beach, and yet we are here being one of the last people talking about the beach because of other things that other people have done. I won't be so quick as to blame the commissioners um, for the decision of, or lack of decision of, to clo open or close their beaches. Um, I think they did what they felt was right, um, and to most extent, I agree with them. I, I, I think that shut our beach down with them keeping it open would be a drastic, drastic mistake. We want to protect our citizens. By closing the beach, I feel that we would be forcing people into a much smaller area and making things even worse. By closing uh, off the beach accesses, I think we're forcing people to park in places they shouldn't be parking, uh, which increases calls to sheriff, the town, us. Everybody gets calls about cars are parking where they shouldn't be. Instead of spreading out, this whole COVID-19, we've talked about social distancing. We've talked about keeping your space, keeping your group small. I think by narrowing down the field at which people have the opportunity to spread out to is a mistake. In fact, I think we should promote the, the beach accesses to help spread people out. We all know that everybody congregates at the north end of the island. I think if we reach something that we can get it out to people that here's where these beach accesses are, spread them out a little bit. I know my beach access where I go out, there's never anybody there on any weekend. There's no problem with social distancing. So, and there's a jet ski rental right there at that beach access. So the fact that people I don't think know that they can spread out, you're still going to have the people, as Council Member Edholt said, you're still going to have the people that are, are, are not going to follow the rules, they're going to do what they want to do, they're not going to listen to no matter what we say. And then that puts us and the law enforcement in a very, very tough spot. Make decisions and have to do things that, that are not going to be favorable and and, and going to get looked down upon it, and I don't want to put them in a position. They're already in a hard enough position having to deal with the amount of people we're going to deal with. I just think that forcing people into a smaller area is is not not the solution we should be looking at. Thank you. Oh. Uh, thank you for your uh, comments. So, from what I've heard so far, and uh, what I can gather here is that uh, we've heard close it down. We've heard uh, not close it down. We've heard spread it out. Um, so, <clears throat> the the, uh, the parking issue on the south end, on the beach, well, on the beach access is all up and down the island. I think they should be limited to the 
the beach residents. I think if, we, if, we, if we're trying to discourage, I understand that the hotels have the reservations for this weekend, and uh, it's really not my intention to run those people off by closing the beach down completely. In other words, you close the beach down, everybody wants to cancel the reservations and go home, and you know, why stay here if we can't get out on the beach and so forth. So it wouldn't be my intention to run those people out of town but it is my intention to stop the hordes and hordes of other people that I envision coming across the alley and the trail over here. In light of the fact that they can't go to the Collier County beaches or Naples for their limited windows, and uh, why would they bother doing that when they can drive 20 minutes further and come to Fort Myers Beach where it's wide open? So oh, that is who I'm concerned about. And, and uh, when you say, you know, why would they drive over for the day and, 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 and drive back, you know, and, and are, we to, are we to be concerned about that? I really think we are. I think if, 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 if the numbers are, are like, I'm sure you've heard these anecdotal stories the same as I have about buses of people coming over here. Uh, maybe you haven't, have you? Have you heard this, these stories? Nod or do something, yes or no? <laughs> I don't okay. doubt you. Okay, well, I'm going to tell you that uh, it came from a reliable source here on the island. I'll tell you who it came from. It came from Al Durrett down at Fishtail Marina. He called me and said, Ray, a friend of mine over in Miami, who was a former bus company owner, called me because he had been called by a, a, a present bus company over in Miami because he knew about, the other guy knew about Fort Myers Beach, and he asked him, are there any good places over in Fort Myers Beach where I can park my buses that I'm going to bring, be bringing over there this weekend. <clears throat> so Al's friend that had called him said, I'm giving you this heads up because you may want to go down into your parking lot early on the mornings of this weekend to make sure there aren't big buses sitting out in your parking lot. The, these are the kind of stories I'm hearing about people coming over here in, by the bus loads. So, so you know, uh, the typical day tripper, you know, we're, we're equipped to handle these, uh, these holiday weekends down here. We've done it for years. We've done it for years. But we're not equipped to handle the kind of numbers of people that were turned away by Collier County uh, over Memorial Day and, and the fact that we're in the middle of a pandemic and many of these people coming over here may be sick as well. You know, they'll be out on the beaches, but you know what? They're going to come up off the beaches. They're going to go into our stores. They're going to, they're going to interact with our people. If they're not masking, you know, which we, don't, we can't make them at this point, who knows? Who knows what's going around, you know? So, so we're, we're kind of leaving ourselves exposed to that sort of uh, onslaught of, uh, of folks. Although that would be my concern about, uh, about deterring that amount of people coming over here. Now, as I say, I'm not trying to, I don't want to, I don't want to shut down these uh, places that, uh, that have, have already uh, booked their guests and everything. We can accommodate them. Now, the other question as to uh, the, the county beaches, well, let me finish with the, uh, the accesses as far as I'm concerned. I think we should close the accesses to only beach residents with, with their hurricane pass or some sort of other pass that they can stick in the window or the sticker that they have already. And, and let our people come up and use those uh, beach accesses. Discourage the second group of people and third group of people and fourth group of people that I'm speaking of from coming. Let the word out that there's no parking on Fort Myers Beach. We can't accommodate you over here because we're full already. So it's not going to be a good experience for us, and it's not going to be a good experience for you. So close those parking access points to our people. Okay, that's that's one way we can do this. We can we can limit limit the amount of people. Um, what else? I mean, uh, sort of uh, sort of an outright ban. I don't know how else to do it except. You know, and then there's the other model. There's the there's the, there's the Collier County model, the Naples model, where they, they call it bif bifurcate. They open up for a couple of hours in the morning. They close it during the, uh, the hot hours of the day, and they open up for a couple, couple more hours in the evening. So it's like 7 in the morning to
to 11 in the morning, close the beach, reopen it at 5 o'clock, close the beach again at sunset. And there, there you have the people that are here already having access to the beach, albeit not all day access, thereby just discouraging other people from coming in here who, if they can't come out and sunbathe all day long in the heat of the day, why would they bother coming out here? You know what I mean? That's, that's the model that they're, that they're using down in, uh, in Collier County, which I suppose is better than nothing. You know, that's better than nothing. So, <clears throat> thoughts? Mr. Chair, I can, I can tell you about the Collier, speaking of the Collier County decision, I'm not a fan of that model. Again, I, I keep going back to, we're taking the people that are here or going, are already here, and, and forcing them into a much smaller space. And now we're we are sending that decision down the line to the business owners to, to have to regula regula reg reg regulate the people coming in and out of there. And, and I, I don't think that's fair. I also don't think it's fair that, that one of their commissioners said publicly that people should inundate our beaches. If that was fair on, on, on You're absolutely point. right, and I'll get to that. And, and <laughs> Again, it brings me back to if this was a, a concern as deep as we're talking about now. I think that we should have we should have addressed this sooner than later. Now we're, we're kind of at the 11th hour and, and we're going to make a decision that people have spent thousands of dollars to come here and, and we're potentially telling them thank you for coming. But now we want to put you in even more danger by bringing you off the beach forcing you inside to these restaurants. Just do not think that is a, a good decision. I don't think it's wise. I don't think it's safe. And you know, we, we have the luxury of using this beach 365 days a year. I can tell you personally, I have no intention of going to the beach, maybe to our beach access, because I know there's hardly anybody ever there. But that's a choice that I get to make. By closing the beaches, the beach, we are not giving some of these people a choice. We are forcing them to go to an area that is still open. We are forcing businesses to have to take people in in unsafe numbers, we'll put them in a position where they have to tell people they can't come in. I, I just don't think that's fair to our residents. I don't think it's fair to our businesses. And and the beach accesses, again, their people are going to come. We can the media can help us. They can we could tell them until we're blue in the face that they can't. Park. There's no park. They're still going to come. They're still going to park on the side streets. They're still going to park in places that they aren't supposed to be. We're going to have our base operators and the Lee County Sheriff's Office in positions to do things that, quite frankly, they, there's other things that they should be doing. We have we have staff. We know where everybody congregates. I think if we can come up with an idea or a way that we can get our base patrol working with Lee County in the areas where the people are most crowded to to help educate them. Remind them of the CDC guidelines. Tell them to spread out if they're getting too close. I don't think anybody wants to put anybody in jail for, for social distancing. I think there's been enough information out there now that, that people are aware. I find myself doing it. it you know, if someone's getting too close, I will, I will either ask them to step back or I will step back. If someone's requiring me to wear a mask, I will put a mask on. At some point, we have to rely on the people and their, their own responsibility to take care of themselves and, and be responsible of the people that they're around. I got a, I just said one second. I just want to an, a, answer a couple of those uh, statements that you made, Councilman. As far as waiting, us waiting to the last minute, the county of Collier made their decision yesterday, okay? Other counties made them a couple of days before that. We're, we're not waiting to the last minute. This is something that was unforeseen. This was unforeseen. No one could have, uh, no one could have guessed uh, three weeks ago, the beaches, all every beach in South Florida w would be closed today. No one could have imagined that. So, so that's why we waited. That's why I waited to call this meeting till today, was because I was waiting to see what Collier County was going to do yesterday. So now they've done it. Now we meet today. Now the other thing about cramming people into a space up there, people that are here already in these resorts. Let's just pick one out of the uh, out of the blue. Red Coconut, Red Coconut RV Park. 
Huge beach, huge beach they have down there. And, uh, I, think they, I think they've uh, limited themselves to about 70% occupancy for, uh, for this weekend voluntarily, which means they can take their people and spread them out on that beach and not have a problem. Beautiful. I'm sure that the, the pink shell up there do that on their beach. I'm sure Lonnie Kai can do it down their beaches, you know, if, if, they, if they do it the right way. I'm sure Diamond Head can do it. Galwin can do it. I'm sure all these places can, uh, can spread the people out. I'm sure the uh, other people from the, the smaller resorts can find a way out to the beach and, uh, and, and find places on the beach to spread out. I'm not, I'm not too concerned about that. I'm concerned, I'm not, I'm not concerned about filling up that beach with people that we're, uh, that we're eliminating from those, from those beach accesses. I'm concerned about everybody else coming in, the day trippers that are coming in from, from the hinterlands out here that are just going to be exasperating the problem that we're going to get from the other coast. That's what's going to happen. And the comment was made earlier about, uh, you know, what are we supposed to do? Uh, put a line in the sand and have an armed guard out there with, uh, to, to separate the beaches? We've done it before. It's not the ideal choice, but we've done it before. And, uh, and I don't want to have to do that, something like that. No one wants to do that. If we were doing this together, we wouldn't be having this discussion. But here we are. So anyhow, uh, we're going to have to get to some sort of consensus about this, uh, this parking business with the accesses and, uh, and take it from there. What's the next step? Tim, I'm sorry. Did I cut? Who did I cut off? Bill? I'm sorry, Bill. I just got a couple of comments on, on things that Dan said. Um, first off, I live near a beach access, and the weekend's just been packed. I mean, pretty much there's just a dozen spots, and they've been busy most of the weekend, some of the weekdays now for some weeks. Um, and much as I like to think that that's like an overflow, that we could take people from downtown and use unused parking on the rest of the island, um, maybe your beach access is different from mine, and that's what I've seen. The other thing is I, you know, Really, if we're going to con if we're concentrating people on the county beaches by re restricting ours, that's not our doing. That's the county's beaches. That's the county's doing. They're the ones who are opening the beach, and they're the ones who are opening up Lynn Hall, which is a relatively small beach with a pretty large parking lot, and focusing people on right downtown. They've made no um, they've made no concession, no effort to try to preserve the safety of people by letting them spread out by number one closing that beach access. Now Bowditch Point. There's a lot of beach there for the, for the amount of parking. People can spread out about it a lot easier than they can at Lynn Hall. Um, neither of those places we have any control about. I know I've seen the emails, just like Rick Sam was talking about. We can't do anything with that parking because it's not our parking lot. Um, the other thing is, is you talk about you know, social distancing and how people behave. You also pointed out a point that you, know, you say you can find information on the web that supports your narrative, no matter where your narrative is. Anywhere from being a hoax to being nothing uh, to being, you know, a serious threat. Um, I really like to try to rely on to the real numbers. And, you know, I've made this as part of my business. If I'm going to develop a product, I want the product to be based on real world results. So I'm not going to spend a lot of money developing in something that's based on a flawed premise. So I look at the numbers and I understand when they said, okay, we're accelerating our testing and we're, we're broadening the range of people we're going to be testing. So we expect the positive numbers to go up. And that happened. But at the same time, they were saying, we're looking at positivity. Now, since we are going to be testing people that don't have a direct link to someone who's infected or not have major symptoms or have just come off of travel, that they expect the positivity rate to go down. The, the, posit the positivity rate hasn't. The number of ER emissions for COVID-like symptoms has gone up. Now, right now, and, and it's kind of like chasing a statistic that suits your narrative. So now people are saying, well, the death rates have been stable. But death is a trailing indicator. So how long does it take from a positive test built before that shows up as, as, as a higher death rate? Now, I'll give it to the medical people. They haven't, we don't have a cure, we don't have a vaccine, but they have better treatment that helps with the outcomes. I think that it's a little bit... Um, uh, short-sighted to rely on demographics, saying that younger people are getting it because those younger people, they will go visit older people, serve them maybe in restaurants and, and, or in a workplace. So the risk is great to our, to our population. And the numbers on Fort Myers Beach and our zip code are going up. 
Um, so there's, there's a lot of indicators to say that this is serious and something we should be definitely looking at. Um, I don't necessarily agree with Ray with if we're going to have people on the island to keep them off the beach access, is because my experience, even with a busy beach access, people spread out as much as they, they want. There's room. They can walk a little ways because there's not that many people coming in. We also have a pretty large catchment area for vacation rentals. And what I've seen is big family groups. I assume they're family groups. So there'll be 30 people in one group. And then it'll be a distance, and it'll be another group, bigger or smaller. Um, my real big problem with this is, you, you know, and, and it, it comes that you only have so many tools that are effective. It doesn't seem like, point to what Ray said, the people who are coming here and they're on the beach, they're renting on the beach, they're in the hotels on the beach, they're in the vacation rentals, they're, they're eating at the restaurants, they booked this well in advance. I have a lot of sympathy for them and I have a lot of sympathy for the businesses that rely on that. Then you pile that on top of all these people that are coming for a very short term onto the island and, and stressing things and going into these same restaurants, same bars, same public spaces, causing a, a, just a very difficult situation. The, one of the only tools besides closing the beach that I think we have is parking because parking is a very limiting factor. And a lot of the people who are coming during the day may not be renting on Fort Myers Beach. They may be renting on Cape Coral or in Iona or somewhere else, and then they come to the beach for the day. Um, we could really limit parking, and particularly if we can get cooperation from the county in limiting parking, then I think that would be um, the lowest cost solution to try to limit the congestion and the lack of social distance that goes on. The other part about you're saying that, you know, basically you can, you, can, you can find data that suits your narrative, is that there's a lot of people who don't believe that this is anything, and that is reflected in their behavior. Well, some people think that masks are not necessary. Some people think that they're harmful. That they're starved. You know, they come up with all kinds of stories about how masks are harmful. But they've been proven in the medical field for a long time. They're not filters. If you, really, if you want to be completely immune to any virus, then you have to get yourself a you know, positive pressure suit and walk around, which might get some really weird tan lines. Um, but masks slow down the velocity of breath. They slow down the velocity of a sneeze or a cough, and they contain some of it within the mask. That effectively increases the distance between people and the benefit of, of other social distancing. So I am concerned there's a lot of people, and a lot of people who may want to come down that are, are the ones that are not concerned about infection, and the ones that are the least likely to social distance. So those are factors. But I really would, if we can find a way to really control parking on the island, both public and private, and I think we have a way to address some of Ray's concerns about people coming um, in hordes from somewhere else. It doesn't stop the buses, but um, it, would, it would certainly limit people who want to come down for a day. I'm just adding to the congestion we already have. Thank you. This is round two, round yeah, the horn. Nothing additional at this time, but thank nothing you. Additional. Thank you. Sam? I have nothing further to say. We've already spoken twice, Dan, but I'll give you a third time. <laughs> Go right you ahead. You seem to have a lot to say, don't I? Yeah. You know, I, I, I don't think that we should turn this into a he said, she said, what the county did or what the county didn't do. Um, we're, we're here to decide what we want to do. They've already told us what they're going to do. Um, no one else has brought up the county. Well, I have. Yeah. I did. <laughs> <laughs> Bill's brought it up a, a couple times, but I, I think that... Uh, not that we, I hate to use the word follow lead, but they have already put out what, what they're willing to do. Um, I think creating confusion with parking and, and just doesn't make sense to me. It, it doesn't make sense to confuse people that are already confused enough over data and the whole COVID-19. I mean, people are already confused. They don't know where to look. They don't know which story to watch, which story to read, which person to listen to, which doctor to listen to, which doctor to not listen to. And they just want to come here and they want to do their thing. Now, again, I think we, we have to be very stringent and very strict on getting as much information out there as we can about following the CDC guidelines. I think that is extremely important if it means putting a sign up at every beach access. If it, whatever it means or whatever it takes, reiterate that we strongly, strongly, strongly suggest that you follow the CDC guidelines, that we start there. I, I, I'm not in favor of, of 
limiting where people can park. I don't think that uh, that's just going to push a problem down the road to somewhere else. And, and I don't see how that's going to solve anything. I promise, Mr. Mayor, I won't I won't talk a fourth time. You're allowed to talk. Then. <laughs> okay. Well. You know, I I'm just curious as to what what we know that the rest of South Florida doesn't know. I'm just curious about that. The rest of South Florida is closed, and we're and we're saying come here. I, I don't get it. I don't the, get it. The rest of South Florida doesn't have the situation that we have, where the oh. county is not working with the town. Oh. Okay. Well, I'm open to uh, motions. Do we have a motion in mind here about the uh, situation for the beach? As far as I can tell, it's uh, close it down completely. It's do some sort of hybrid. Do something with the parking or do absolutely nothing. I will make a motion that we do not close down the beach. Uh, we do not restrict the parking to, to just residents only. Um, that we, we instruct the manager, town manager, to have his staff, uh, however we can come up with, with the PIO and, and our base to get information out as much as possible, that we encourage people to stay home. But if you do decide to come, that you be respectful, you be responsible, you follow the CDC guidelines, uh, and, and you just be a good person. Second for that motion. There's really much, I mean, to do nothing is that, yeah. is that well, a... that's, that's right. Uh, so, so that's, uh, to say, Councilman, that, that that motion fails for a second. Anybody else have one? Before we do this, and in, in, in sort of respect for what Dan was offering, we just take a moment, and maybe hear from the town manager as to what his plan of attack is for the weekend, given the challenges that we all face. Maybe that would help us see if there's anything that he needs for us to help, Mr. Town Manager. If that's okay, Mr. Mayor. That's fine. Yeah. Councilors, um, <clears throat> our um, code enforcement people, um, while they are ambassadors of, of good behavior on the beach, do not have the authority to to write citations to a person. They write citations to against things, vehicle or your property. So um, while it would be our intent to try to um, encourage responsible behavior on a beach every day, all 365 days a year, of course, we'll be doing that this weekend. Um, we have um, ordered additional signage with regards to um, social distancing. We've added to our typical variable message signs that during the beach to to social distancing, as well as you know, we used to have no fireworks lab, but we've added a second message to my people entering our municipality that um, to be um, to be socially to follow social distance guidelines. Um, so at the end of the day, um, there's only limited things that, that we're going to be able to do um, as a town. Now, to that end, uh, I've been in contact with the um, West District uh, Lee County Sheriff's Office uh, captain. Um, I've discussed his uh, assessment of manpower needs. At his request, I've uh, agreed to uh, pay for additional officers to augment what he believes his, his manpower needs would be. He's done an excellent job of rearranging his staff to put some additional resources on the beach this weekend. Um, on that, he knows we have um, uh, people who will be doing traffic control that are physically here on the beach who he can pull from if the cir circumstances further warrant additional manpower so he has a second tier of manpower 
besides the, the manpower, his regular manpower, the manpower we added, and he's added, and he has a third tier of manpower. He could pull those people if, if circumstances dictate that because they're here versus trying to call an officer in from off the beach. They have to fight their way to get onto the beach to come assist with the situation. So um, we'll have those resources here to, to enforce the law, and I know they'll do a good job at that. Um, but that's what we can do. Um, right before the meeting started, I got, you know, the last call I got from a citizen before this, this meeting started was the, uh, the bus call. That, you know, that there's team buses being organized to come over here. And I don't know if that's true or not true. But um, really people have that concern and that concern about people coming over for the day. Um, so um, I think you all have, as you all expressed what you've heard from your constituents, seem to be well apprised of, of the issues, and the competing issues in some cases at hand. I think you have a, a well-rounded view of the issue. Now the question is, can you find an action that you feel is appropriate given the circumstances? Circumstances were created by others. That's all the counties in Florida who closed their beaches, one following another in a domino type effect, um, culminated by what um, was done in Collier, where they did what I think they were called bifurcated, where they closed their beach in the middle of the day, uh, compounded by uh, our commissioner saying, everyone come to Lee since we're somewhat closed. Um, so here we are. Um, those of you who who may be under the impression that well we're you know or we're ex full anyway you know does the the day trippers create additional risk burden whatever you know that's for you all to determine. And if if you think it's a serious issue to try to figure out a way or, where we can mitigate it, you feel that. A party of uh, you know 35. If it's a party of 55. It's not a big deal. Then be it. But, um, I want to be clear that you know what the capabilities of our staff are. Um, we see someone doing something wrong. Our option is to ask them politely to take appropriate behavior, and if they don't appears to be a violation of the law to, to refer that matter to the sheriff for, for enforcement. So that's what we can do. Ask a question, Mr. Lee. So, Mr. Town Manager, is it fair to say then, aside from these the very legitimate policy debates, Mr. Lee, these are very legitimate policy debates that were aside from those debates, which I know you prefer not to get into, which I appreciate have the tools in your toolbox fair to say that you have the tools in your toolbox already in other words you don't need anything from the council today as part from these policy discussions to do your job well again if, if you understand that uh, we cannot control social distancing cannot control whether people wear masks and and all of these issues that surround the COVID-19 um, concerns, I want, you to be I want to be clear with you that we're not going to be able to do anything beyond trying to educate or re-educate or reinforce what appropriate responsible behavior is. That's all we can do. And if people decide not to follow that, um, be a violation of law, can we would then have to refer it to the sheriff's office for, for them to consider that matter and determine what the appropriate response would be. Speaking of the sheriff, I noticed that we have representatives here. I'd like to give them an opportunity to speak if they have anything they'd like to share with us since they've taken the time to be here. Yeah, uh, if you could just say one last thing before they come up. Sure. Um, so, 
I guess, um, Councillor, you know, I don't know when, when, where the too much line is. Is you know, that's for the five of you to determine, um, and if there are appropriate measures to try to try to control that or not, so that there is a too much line that might be crossed. Clearly, um, had everyone, as the mayor said, absorb some of the people in, in all these other counties and situations, um, we would not uh, be facing the perhaps the too much problem. We, we've been handling our Fourth of July crowds for years. What we've not have had is, 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 to my knowledge, is cases where basically all the other counties have closed off their recreational avenues to their constituents, thereby potentially driving that herd in our direction. Whether it'll come or not, I don't know. Clearly, there are some people who feel that they they will. Um, hope not on a bus because I don't know that it would be good to have 50 or 60 people on a bus in close quarters and come out and be on the beach and be perhaps talking to other people. Um, that's dangerous, but um, we're, you know, we're, um, and we're not talking about um, Liberty County of 8,000 people in closing their beach. No, we're talking about the, the most of the most populous counties closing their recreational areas. So, um, again, you'll have to decide you know, if you feel that that perhaps create a too much burden for us here. If you feel that way, then what we could do to perhaps mitigate it. Captain, you want to come up for a few minutes here? Thanks for coming. Your, for the record, Brian, just identify yourself. Uh, Captain Brian Jakaki, Sister Commander. Thanks for coming out. You want to give us a little uh, your own take on all this? Well, I think that we worked well with uh, Roger, and we also spoke. I'm trying to prepare, and my staff and I, uh, we feel that we've prepared for this weekend, given the fact that there's no fireworks show going on. Um, it, we don't think that it needed the same type of manpower that it would have otherwise. And when you guys opened the beach, uh, or excuse me, when the county opened the beach um, a, I don't know, a month or so ago or whatever, and you guys were still closed with some limited uh, hours, I felt like um, we managed it very well. Um, any problems your um, code enforcement folks had, we came down and dealt with. But we really have to just rely on the people making good choices down there. Um, aside from that, for those that are not, um, when any of my deputies were com would come in contact with these folks, they complied. So we're going to have the occasional oddball that doesn't, uh, one too many drink person, whatever it may be, but I feel that my staff and I have uh, worked with Roger here. We have enough people down here to, to help you guys keep it calm. And What's your opinion, Captain? I mean, are we off base here thinking that all these people are going to come over here from the East Coast? Or uh, is this my imagination? Or uh, I don't want to put you on the spot, but uh, what's your gut feeling about this? Well, I didn't see that we had a huge influx of people when we first opened our beaches again. And I think at that time, the other coast was, was still closed. So, um, quite honestly, I think even if we do get influx of people, we're going to be staffed to handle it from the sheriff's office standpoint. So I really don't know that I'm um, after putting much thought into it. I think it's going to be harder at this point um, to try to stop people from coming here. That's going to make our job a lot harder. To make our job a lot harder if you close the city side of things. Meanwhile, Lynn Hall Park is open. That's going to create more of a problem for us. What is that problem? Well, um, and people are going to be packed into that small section of the county beach over there. Um, as you all mentioned, we have a lot of parking over at Lynn Hall. Uh, across the street, there's quite a bit of parking for people to utilize. And I don't know who mentioned it, but we'll just draw. it's difficult to draw a line in the sand. Um, people are going to be 
they're spreading out anyway, which is going to cause us problems because we're going to field those calls. Oh, they're on the city beach. Need to be ten feet over. It'd be difficult. Um, I think if at this point, if all the accesses remain open, and we allow people to spread out. Seven miles of beach here. Um, we're going to be in better shape than trying to jam them into a little boxed area. Um, from the sheriff's standpoint, from my standpoint as the commander over here, I think I have the personnel to account for this. Um, my lieutenant and I have spent some time doing that, and we've been working with Roger as far as uh, you know pulling some additional resources. So on Saturday specifically. Um, I think I have 12 down here during the day up until about 8 o'clock. Um, doesn't account for the traffic folks that uh, allocated for a center there. Who was the other place, Roger? Center and uh, at the foot of the bridge and at the Old San Carlos. And okay, so and then we're going to have the traffic control folks. Anybody have any questions for the captain? You mentioned uh, one too many drink guy. I think I met him. <laughs> I think we've all met him. Yeah. Um, yeah, one thing that comes to my mind is that um, I, I, would, I would lead towards maybe enforcement over traffic from the get-go that I think to, um, you know, take people to, to, to monitor a couple of crosswalks as opposed to trying to get people to behave. Because, you know, I understand there seems to be a lot leaning towards, you know, just doing business as usual. I, um, I do also worry about the sheriff that if you're going and you're policing people who are not social distancing, that puts your guys at risk. Um, and you guys have enough risk in your job. Um, so I think, you know, I, I appreciate what you're saying that, you know, it's manageable from a uh, maybe. I, we're also. No, we're every, we're, we'll be we'll be a melting pot. We'll get people here from a lot of different places and send them on. May not show up in Lee County, Fort Myers Beach statistics. So I think that you know, I understand the difficulty, and we want to make sure we can come up with something that works, that's enforceable for you. But I think we you know can't go towards doing nothing because we think it will come with some um, inconveniences. Yes, I'd like to bring up fireworks. I'm much more concerned about people being injured by fireworks this year because of the fact that the governor has expanded that supposedly and people are not aware of the fact that we have a local ordinance against that. Um, you said you were going to have people here up until 8 o'clock. I'm concerned we're going to have people shooting off fireworks after 8 o'clock. Well, as I mentioned, we've got uh the 11 people here on Saturday use as an example to deal with the crowd issue that we're going to have. There's not a fireworks display show down here. Are we still going to get fireworks to go off after 8 o'clock? Yes, but um, we're still going to have staff down here. It's just not going to be the crowd that we're expecting during the day. And we're going to deal with I was concerned fireworks. when you said up until 8 o'clock, so you're still going to have people here after 8, just fewer we number? Man the, we man the city 24 hours a day. So well, I know that, but... Yeah. The grunt of my uh, force is going to be during the day to deal with the crowds at early evening time when the, the sun starts to go down and they start um, blowing off the fireworks. There's going to be people here. Are you going to have people on the beach in vehicles for fireworks, watching for firework activity? That's my concern. Okay. Thank you. Captain, you mentioned 11 officers. Is that including the extra officers that Roger mentioned earlier, or is that not include those? It does include the, uh, we, we have two people that are going to be designated to the uh, things running up and down the beach and uh, side by sides. Who those numbers are. And, and if I may ask, what is the plan for writing guys out south on the beach to, to the mayor's point? if? does show up down at Santini Plaza. Um, I know in the past there's, there's been a tendency for the sheriffs to congregate on the north end and not necessarily go to the south end and that's been some some concern for some of the people that live down there that uh, the police presence isn't always uh, what they feel should be uh, up to par right. on a holiday weekend. Well, we're going to make sure the staff down there, the lieutenant and I spoke to some business owners down that way and they were concerned because of the, the uh, 
size of the beach access is down there the width of the beach down there that we always have problems with the fireworks so we were going to address that and post somebody or one or two people down on that end as well to deal with that issue all right thank you Captain. thank you for all you do just thank you for your service we'll see you on the lieutenant these are tough times thank you for your service for the sport. thank you brian <clears throat> Okay. Do um, you want to entertain a motion? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, I would make a motion that we uh, uh, that we pass that ordinance making masks mandatory under conditions. And I read some of the uh, I read some of the ordinances that have been passed by neighboring communities. So they would include uh, masks be manual f uh, mandatory for anybody in a situation where they cannot social distance, including being indoors, for anybody over six years old. Um, they would have to wear a mask uh, going into a restaurant until seated. Um, at grocery stores, um, other other shops would have to wear a mask inside. And to structure the ordinance so that there's fine for businesses that don't conform, so we don't get into the much of a trap of having something that's, that's difficult to enforce, going after individuals not wearing masks. That's the uh, total motion. We have to be modeled after something that's been done before. I'm willing to second the motion. I'm not sure I got all the details of it. And, and that was one of my concerns about this meeting is we had nothing in writing to look at. Um, before I would vote on it, I'd want to see something. I'll second it in theory, <laughs> I guess. Discussion. That's for discussion. Okay. Um, and what I did is I went through and I, I looked at there's a website where it has the ordinance that have passed recently by other municipalities. And usually they have, you know, of course, all the whereas, but then they have a few different provisions in it. The, um, the bottom line is you say, if you, bottom line is if you can't social distance, wear a mask. And that would include things, practically speaking, like Publix, um, servers in restaurants, um, shops, um, where you, you just can't social distance. Uh, the exceptions, there's always an exception clause in that. And I've seen that anywhere from you know, kids over two to kids over six. I would think kids over six be a better rule because I know four or five year olds who tend to be a little antsy, that kind of stuff. Um, and, is the, and, the, and the reason why I think that this is a, a, a good step is because mandatory mask rules are one thing we can do that is proven effective at reducing the spread of the virus that is not detrimental to businesses, not detrimental like would be to try to, to keep people away or closing down beaches, chasing away customers. This is something that can be done that is business friendly, but has been proven through the, the, the long history of medicine to be effective at, um, at reducing the spread of the viruses. So the details of the ordinance I've seen, like I said, just come through with a few different when, do, when you have to have a mask, uh, what conditions, and what conditions you can be exempted from it. I'm still a little confused with the motion. So are you saying that you are, you're asking for people to wear them all the time unless, so you don't have to wear it if you properly social distance? I didn't hear anything about inside, outside. At one of the, yeah, and I didn't mention that, but one of the ordinances I looked at, it specified um, inside, but the idea is when you're outside, you you know, you can social distance, but if you're sitting shoulder to shoulder with someone outside, you are not social distancing. Again, I guess my question is, are you, suggest, are you making a motion that they have to wear them all the time? Or, it, it, to me, if, if I'm confused, I can't imagine how, Everybody else in the general public wouldn't be confused as to when they're supposed to wear it, when they're not supposed to wear it. Um, it, it, I, I, it, does, it would be difficult to, and you had mentioned, I believe, in there about finding businesses that, that don't, don't uh, adhere to it. John, do we not already have an ordinance that basically is of, of uh, social, proper social distancing? I don't know, masks are not mentioned in there, but. Not an ordinance. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Do um, uh, on uh, declaration of emergency regulation number three, uh, which was back on March 30th, um, and states uh, all the warehouse clauses. 
persons residing or visiting the town of Fort Myers Beach remain in their dwelling units on or in their property, uh, excluding the beach and within the EC zone district, except as necessary to seek medical care, food, and other essential needs. Context is that this uh, declaration was the stay at home when the governor issued the stay at home uh, about the same time. The, the point that um, uh, you, and that certainly can be modified in, this, in the context of that uh, stay-at-home order has been lifted by the governor uh, statewide. Uh, but to the point um, re uh, number two, resident, uh, residents and visitors shall adhere to social distancing practices, washing hands with soap and water for at least 20 seconds or using hand sanitizer, covering coughs and sneezes into the sleeves or elbow, not hands, regularly cleaning high-touch surfaces and not shaking hands. Residents and visitors are strongly encouraged to limit all of their travel except as necessary. We can modify um, that section to reflect that um, if it's the will of the, of, of the council to add in um, uh, not only the social distancing but the use of, of, of masks in, in go out in public, uh, as uh, Commissioner Veach or Councilmember Veach has um, um, suggested, uh, and then. Paragraph three of that order says residents and visitors may engage in outdoor activity and recreation areas not otherwise and that they have to um, stay at least six feet between each other and groups of ten or more individuals may not gather. And that's again consistent with the CD guidelines uh, that uh, have been discussed. Um, the order was entered on March 31st, 2020 and states that it stays in effect until rescinded by the town council. To the best of my knowledge, and looking through the various um, emergency declarations that the the uh, council has adopted, this particular one has not been rescinded. To the extent that it's been modified, uh, certainly by uh, the governor's orders, then it's, it's that paragraph two and three that I believe is what you all are potentially talking about, directing uh, staff to modify. You can do that. I guess the other thing I would throw out is could see a copy. Sanibel just passed one. If we could see a copy of what their order was, it might be helpful. Yeah, I mean, if it's the direction of, of, of the council, what I and, and what I'll do is I'll, I can draft um, the document and and circulate it um, uh, to each of you for review and comment, and then some, um, to you all voting to then um, submit it to the mayor for a signature. That's what would happen. Yeah, I do have a um, I do have the ordinance up that was passed by Monroe County last week okay. and it says that the mandatory requirements besides all the definitions and the whereas um, every person over the age of six who is away from his or her residence shall wear a face mask covering when not able to engage in social distancing number two is every person over the age of six who is away from his or her residence shall carry a face covering capable of immediate use Number three every operator employee customer or patron of a business establishment must wear a mask face covering while at that business establishment unless unable or less able to engage in social distancing. Number four is operator or employees of a business or lodging establishment shall, shall ensure that every individual in that establishment is compliance with this section. And it has a, an exemption section. So it says restaurants and bar customers or patrons while dining and or consuming beverages while seated. Um, a gym patron engaged in a workout or class when able to engage in social distancing with the next closest person. Three, barbershop or beauty salon customers where patrons are wearing a face covering while reasonably interfere with receiving services. Um, it says lodging establishment yes, while inside the lodging unit including but not limited to hotel room, motel room, vacation rental unit, timeshare unit or similar unit. And e, any person who is under the age of six years of old is unconscious or incapacitated or otherwise unable to remove the mask without assistance. And then um, F is public safety, fire, law enforcement, other life safety personnel and their personal protective equipment requirements will be governed by respective agencies. That's, that's the Monroe um, ordinance that was passed last week. Yes, and just add one addendum to the Monroe County uh, ordinance I believe it's one of the strongest in the state but I also believe it's so strong that I don't think it expires until June of 2021 is that correct I didn't look at the expiration date I believe it's June of 2021 just to give you a sense of 
my, their mindset when they put this forward. So just just for that shocked me a little bit, but I know they can obviously change that at any time. But that seems like a and if I may, since I have the floor, I I, I think the mask conversation is a, is an interesting one. Um, I have a libertarian streak on, in me on that. I, I listened to the Sanibel debate for two hours. Listen to it because it was it was noticed, it was made available to the to the to the uh, to their to the public in a way that each counselor I think said they got 400 emails about the ma proposed mask ordinance. They knew what it was. They knew what about it. They knew the details. And they were very. There was great debate on both sides of the issue. It, it ended up passing three to one. The mayor was had a family emergency, couldn't be there, but the mayor did send notice that he opposed the ordinance. It was actually a proclamation, technically. Uh, so I guess the point being procedurally, this had been on the table. The town uh, or the uh, Sanibel had a chance to really digest this, have input. Again, 400 emails. The emails that we've primarily gotten these last couple of days have been about closing the beach. Uh, so I just think procedurally, if and, and if we did pass something today, how we're going to educate folks in time for the 4th of July weekend, particularly with folks coming here and then expect enforcement to enforce it. I've got, I think we have some procedural challenges that we need to think about, particularly if we're going to do this today, I would have serious concerns. The record. Um, I've been, I've been told that most people coming in here from out of town are wearing masks coming from places where they're mandatory already so <clears throat> most of most of our visitors are already uh, in tune with the, the with this idea it's us we that are not so anyhow uh, okay is there any further discussion on the motion which is to uh, to get a uh, mask ordinance you know just kind of get to the point of why I'm making this motion too is because I think the two go hand in hand I mean I mean the idea of you really, the idea of closing a beach would be a very short-term thing. This would be over the weekend while the other beaches are closed. Um, the mask, you said, would probably have legs that would last longer. But um, I do think it's not like we're the only one who've, who have been looking at this. I know that, like you said, we haven't had an ordinance in front of the public for a while. Um, I, under, I understand your reservations on um, doing something without getting additional public input. A lot of the emails that I had, most of them, like you, were about closing the beach. But a lot of them were about masks. I hear a lot of people that have a concern that seems to um, go the opposite of what the mayor said, that they go to the local publics and they see locals wearing masks, but then family groups that are coming in on their Saturday stock up are not, and also not following the order to go through the store. Um, but, you know, I, again, I think this is just a business-friendly way to do things. If you want to, if the, uh, if the council wants to engage in it now, we can do that. If they want, if they want to defer this for a future discussion, we can, but I'd be really hesitant to put this off until August. Well, just forgive me. Was your original motion to have it just be for the 4th of July weekend? Was that your original no, motion? It okay. was to really, like I said, I hadn't talked about an end date, but I don't, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense to, that unless we really get a, a much better grip on this. Uh, on this just let me see if I may, Mr. Mayor, just for the record, I, I'm not opposed to masks. I wear a mask, particularly to Publix and to CVS because I know folks who uh, have made a decision uh, because they're high risk to shelter in place. They have to go to Publix. They have to go to CVS. I have respect for them. I always wear a mask. My wife always wears a mask at Publix, CVS. Any business that has a, uh, that requires a mask, I always wear the mask. Never give anybody any grief. Respect their business. Put that mask on with no, no angst, no, no, no anger. Uh, certainly want to be cooperative, be kind, and I encourage everybody to do that. Um, so I just wanted to make that clear. I'm not, I'm not part of the, I'm not, you know, understand the benefit of masks. Although oddly enough, for the first month of the pandemic, everybody thought masks weren't going to be necessary, which seemed odd, but, but they've since figured it out and that's fine. So anyways. Okay. So the motion, uh, was to, uh, to amend the, uh, was in the emer the existing emergency order, um, they're expanding that to uh, include uh, masks and so forth right bill yes. and uh, that was made by councilman Veach and seconded by okay. mayor okay 
Any further discussion? Uh, yeah, Mr. Mr. Mayor, if I may, I just want to go on record that I, I don't think it's the job of the council to tell a business how to run their business. Um, we've all been to places that Home Depot, for example, they they ration the amount of people that get to go in there. They tell you you have to wear a mask. Uh, you know, Publix chooses not to do that, and, and that's on Publix. I, I you know, as as Council Member Adderholt said, I. If it's required, I wear it every time. I have no problem with it. I choose to go to the place that requires me to wear it, I'll wear it. Outside, I don't wear it. But I don't go anywhere near someone, especially if I see them wearing a mask. Um, and if I do come up to them and they ask me to put one on, then I'll do it. So it, it again, it comes back to, to self-responsibility for me. I, I don't think it's, it's, it's our, I don't think it's right for us to tell businesses, especially find them if, if um, Someone calls in and says, "Hey, X Y Z is not is not following the 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 rules that that we put in place. It's pitting neighbors against neighbors, in my opinion. And, and I don't think that uh, forcing people to wear a mask, especially outside, is a is a good decision. And I, and I I for that reason, I don't I wouldn't support your motion." Let me just kind of one one thing because I I've heard the same kind of you know same arguments from a lot of people saying that you know this forcing people to wear a mask is um, somehow violating their civil liberties, and I have scratched my head trying to come up with some kind of allegory that we've done in the past as a society that would be similar to it. And the one thing I came up with was smoking. Was that not that long ago when you could smoke in an elevator? You know, restaurants had, it was common for smoking. Bars were like, Beach and Chong were in there. Um, we have a society, we determined that it was worth it because the person smoking was having the effect of someone's health next to them, just by proximity. To me, I look at this, that's the closest allegory I can find. We've accepted that smoking around others is not acceptable. So why should not taking care of not infecting people with a potential virus not also be acceptable? Well, that, Councilmember Veach, I, I never mentioned anything about civil rights or people losing their civil rights, but you brought it up I think it's important to remember what this weekend is about it's about our freedom to make choices and if I choose not to be around someone that smokes or around someone that chooses not wear a mask that's my choice I don't think telling someone that they should have to do something that maybe has a, a, a health risk to them is fair I, I, especially outside um, and I think we should leave it up to the businesses to decide and most have most have rolled back to the 50 percent most have rolled back to I spoke to several uh, restaurants this week that have went back to requiring their 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 employees to wear masks just out of the sake of, of, of respect and they feel it's the right thing to do so I think we need to give our businesses some credit on the island I think they know what they're doing they know how to run their business they know what's best to protect them their employees and the people that come in and if they require people to wear a mask then they should have to wear a mask or they can choose to go somewhere else uh, I again I don't think it's it's our job to tell them how to run their business yeah, I'm going to go, but if you don't, if anybody else wants to chip in, I don't want to make this into a, a dialogue here. It's a counterpoint. Um, but I would just say that, you know, back to kind of the smoking analogy, is it doesn't work the way now. You can't go into a, you know, you go into a restaurant, there aren't some that are smoking or some that are non-smoking. We've made them all non-smoking. That, that was part of the thing. The other thing is that saying that if you don't want to be around a potential contagion or you want to be around smoke or you don't want to be around whatever risk, stay away from the, 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 the common areas, the public areas. I think that that is saying that we're you have to surrender these public areas to the careless. And I, that, to me, is more of a violation of civil liberty, saying that I'm not allowed to go somewhere because someone else is making it unsafe for me, as opposed to saying you have to wear a mask. I respect your opinion, but I'm saying, it, to me, it more goes the other way. I mean, to stay home if I don't think you're, out, what you're behaving safely. Okay. Elementary inquiry, if I could, Mr. Mayor, are we, for each, are we debating your proposal? Are we debating the Monroe County proposal? Are we debating the Sanibel? Are we leaving it to the attorney? Because I, I would just say for the last, for the two and a half hours, Sanibel debated this proclamation. They called it. They were they were fine tuning the language. They had the language in front of them. They were debating points and really wrestling with the minutia of this thing. In a long process. I don't even have anything in front of me. I'm, I'm just wondering procedurally, what, how are we doing this today? What's your, what's your proposal, I guess, procedurally, so I know what I'm voting for or against? 
I know, I know you haven't had a lot of time to think about this because we just. But to be honest, I relied on the work of others. I like you apparently have seen the Monroe County um, and the other ordinances too, and I, I looked through those, and I talked to um, some of the people involved in the uh, in the Sandoval debate about it. Um, which one's I, which one does yours most mostly most likely near? I guess is my question. Um, I I like, I like the Mon the Monroe one is simple, and it also I I feel that. I understand you're saying it's strict, but it's also, you know, with the age groups and they have a, a ADA provisions in there that also make some sense. But I think that it just, to me, it's as simple to the point. There aren't a lot of different variables on it. It's just saying, if you, basically it's saying, if you can't social distance, wear a mask. And the areas that are particularly concerned, like you said, the CVS and the publics, you know, the, other, the, other, the other advantage to businesses to passing a, a mask ordinance is, a lot of businesses have really gone very strict. Like Costco now, you can't go in without a mask. Um, Publix, you can. PBS, I'm not really sure. I haven't been in. Um, not required. But I think, though, that when a business does it, sometimes they can present, that can create an adversary relationship between the customer and the business, which is never a good thing from a business perspective. Um, if there's an ordinance and you remove that, not only are you you're making that, those cases safer for everybody, but you're also giving the business a reason to require it that isn't just, I want you to. It's because it's an ordinance. Those are all fair points. I guess Annabelle said indoors. I think they didn't do anything outdoors. I'm just trying to understand what we're voting on. So the Monroe County is both indoor and outdoor. Your conditions that you mentioned, are we leaving that to John to draft? I, I just don't even know. I mean, I appreciate your work in this, but I don't know uh, what we're specifically voting on. Well, you know, and I think that could, that I, could I jump in here? Could we take a recess, have something printed out that we could look at? Because I, I sympathize with you. I don't like to vote on something unless I see it in writing. So I'd like to see a draft of some kind. So I'd like to ask for a recess so that we could have something in writing. And, uh, can you put something together, uh, or uh... <laughs> well, I, I I think that or, that if I may suggest. That um, if there's, as I understand the motion from uh, from Councilmember Veach, is that he would like for the the council to adopt the language from Monroe County. So uh, that's and that's if I'm incorrect, uh, correct, correct me if I'm incorrect. And so that would be, and that's the motion is to take the language from Monroe County's uh, uh, ordinance. So that would be what would be printed out. Assuming you all agree with it, then I would just incorporate that into an amendment to the declaration. That's your motion. I can write is it, it up. Is it the Monroe County ordinance? Yes, it is. Okay. Could we have a copy of that, please? Yes. That's all I'm asking. Yeah, I'd, I'd... Um, I, I and, so... and could we just take a recess for him to do that? Yeah, we can do that. And if we might, John, just for point of reference, because it's germane to this conversation, also just. Just for uh, just for observation purposes, see the Sanibel ordinance as well, or proclamation. You have something to. Or. Sure. We'll break for uh, 15 minutes. Enough, John. And yeah, that'll should be enough time. Okay, we'll we'll meet back around uh, quarter till 10 till.
city of Sanibel and the county of Monroe to uh, look at. I assume that we're going to do some sort of hybrid of these two. So, Mr. Heron, would you like to lead us out here? Yeah, um, I've looked through both the documents, and they're very similar. Uh, the distinctions, the primary distinctions that I see is that uh, the definitions in the Monroe County Ordinance are a little bit more specific. Um, uh, the age um, of the um, of the minimum age in the Sanibel is actually more restrictive than Monroe County's. It's two years old versus six years old. Um, the exemptions are pretty much the uh, similar. Uh, I suspect that um, whichever came first, the other used as a template uh, based upon the similarities of the two. Um, in my opinion, uh, to the extent that you wish to use either one as a template, uh, it's which one the a majority of the council feels comfortable with uh, using and will um, use that as, a, as um, um, you know, I'll incorporate that into um, an emergency declaration for the mayor to sign um, because they are um, um, significantly similar to each other. It's just the fine points of age, uh, for example, as I said, two years on um, years versus six on two years for Sanibel. Yeah, two years for Sanibel uh, versus six years from for Monroe County, um, and also again the definitions uh, are more extensive and 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 um, particular uh, with regard to Monroe County's versus Sanibel's. I think it's important to note too, Mr. Mayor, that the enforcement violation, the fines, Monroe County is 60 days in jail and a maximum of $500 fine per occurrence, whereas Sanibel is $50. Yeah, the, the, uh, that derives from state statute, um, and you can modify it. There is a general state statute that says a violation of any municipal ordinance um, can be enforced. Uh, with, uh, through criminal sanctions of up to 60 days in jail uh, and or a fine of $500 or alternatively you can make the violation a non-criminal civil infraction uh, which is historically what we've done with the previous orders uh, and we would do the same thing that would be my recommendation. Give me just on that point your recommendation would be the Sanibel language? As Mr. far yes um, it, uh, currently um, we bring it back up. Um, I'm your question is Sanibel language about enforcement. Yes. Uh -huh. Thank you. Particular, give me a moment and I will. Bill's bottom of page six. Got it on page four in the middle. They they kind of duplicated their order twice. Okay. While he's looking, Roger, do you know is that code enforcement? Write these citation, or does it have to be the sheriff's department? Well, it depends on how you um, analyze the language. The problem with code enforcement is if we walk up to you and say you're not wearing a mask, what's going on? And they say no. They were, well, we're going to give you a ticket. You said, fine. And they give us your license or whatever so we know who you are. And they say, no, there's nothing we can do. Um, another thing I would just caution you about, um, you know, while you may deem, um, Monroe County want to be um, to um, I would I would venture to say that fifty dollars is probably too light. We, in past orders, what um, what we have put in and you all have approved uh, is the following language: in accordance with applicable state law, sections one dash 
12 and 12-25 of the Code of Ordinance of the Town of Fort Myers Beach and Article 5 of Chapter 2 of the Land Development Code of Fort Myers Beach. As I'll refer to your code enforcement system. Uh, any violation of any rule or regulation issued and set forth herein may be punishable by a fine of up to $5,000, which is the maximum um, civil violation that can be assessed. So it can go from either zero to up to $5,000. And would you comment on what Roger just said? Who, who actually enforces? Well, if, if you have, if you want to set a, um, a specific amount, um, then we can put that into the order, uh, or you can leave it in the discretion of the the um, uh, uh, enforcement officer uh, based upon the criterion in the code of what um, of the maximum fine that that can be imposed again from zero to to. Five thousand. Working under the premise that code enforcement would enforce this, not the sheriff's office. Yes. And what about Roger's point about? when you ask to see identification you comment well, the, on this here uh, unlike um, um, there is a section in the code that says a failure to sign up the um, uh, the the citation uh, can be back to um, uh, council member Aller's comment can be enforceable by treating it as a second degree misdemeanor um, and punishable up to 60 days in jail or a $500 fine um, and that's generally when the code enforcement officer would be accompanied by um, the sheriff's officer saying, hey, here, you, you have to accept this. If you don't, he may arrest you. Language that you're suggesting or positing right now is a $5,000 fine? It can be up to a $5,000 fine. That's the maximum allowed under your code for what are considered to be irreversible or re irreparable violations that, that directly affect health, safety, and welfare of the residents. Want to take away that discretion that the code enforcement officer has on a case-by-case -case basis is to determine what the, the nature of the, of the fine should be, then just tell us what the number is. Hey, John, I have a question also. Yes, sir. Following the uh, Monroe County one, in Section 2, Number 4, it says the operator employees of a business or lodging establishment shall ensure that every individual in the establishment complies with this section. So if a fine is written, who does it go to, the employee or the operator? I, 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 I would, just, would go to the operator and to the violator, to the person. You can issue a citation to uh, either the person who's violating it, the one who's in noncompliance, uh, uh, or the operator of the business, or both. The idea is that um, at some point, the, through course of effect or the accumulation of fines against the operator, the operator of the business is now going to be proactive and tell the patrons coming into the business, hey, wait a minute, you need to have a mask. Not you and I are both going to be the subject of, of potential fines. Okay. If I, if I might, um, it seems like we're working off the Monroe County, um, and I would suggest that we might want to add the exceptions from the Sanibel. Uh, starting on page 3, number B, the exception that people who have a medical condition be an exception and G, H, and I. Um, people in hotel rooms, people in churches, et cetera, et cetera. Those are, the, those are the ones that are missing from the Monroe that Sanibel has. And I'd rather grant those exceptions rather than leave them out. So I would personally suggest an addition of B, G, H, and I. Doesn't uh, the Monroe 3D hear what H does in the... Uh does. My apologies. I'm reading this too fast. I'm just uh, trying I, to pull in things. Uh, um, I'm sorry, that's B. That's not necessary. No. Okay, with all the changes that I've made. I wasn't finished. I'm oh, sorry. You're, um, just to clarify, you're saying so you would like to have the exceptions for 6B yes. and I. Got it. Um, I said G, H, and I. H is already there, though. Right, right so G and I. BG&I. BG&I. And I would also 
change to the Sanibel $50 fine. I think the point of this is not to be collecting money, but to encourage, educate people used to the idea. So that would be my preference that we go with. And I really didn't have time to, to do this in detail, but those are the things off the top of my head that I would add from the Sanibel and to the Monroe. All right, with you, Bill. This is your item. Yeah, I'm not. I don't really know. I mean, usually the churches I've seen have a pretty good job of social distancing, but I see people wearing masks in there. I'm not sure. Why you can still wear happening. masks. This is just saying that we're not going to go in and ticket people in church for not wearing masks. I don't want to start a whole church and state war yeah. over this. Right. So I'd rather just exempt them. The other thing I would just talk to is is about the. Um, amounts I think that for an establishment if they're you know if, if, if they are habitually violating rules then um, a fifty dollar fine is probably not going to have much effect of course you know to Roger's point enforcement goes in there and they choose not to give them any information what are they to do yeah. are we are we putting something in place that is unenforceable at all well i mean <laughs> you could argue that for fireworks alcohol consumption on the beach dogs well, off leash question. um but i think that that's also part of the reason that i really like having a having a fairly stiff penalty against the operator themselves because they have property they're an entity which the town can um, fine and 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 put liens on or an individual who's here from from the municipality uh, on can can we do fifty dollars for an individual versus, say, five hundred dollars for a business? Sure. Is that acceptable to you, Bill? Mm -hmm. Procedurally, if an employee's on break out back, they take their mask off and they're talking to another colleague. They're going to find the business owner five hundred dollars for that. Would that be just what we're just talking about here, John? Uh, I think that the, that's that certainly would be in the discretion of the um, uh, code enforcement officer. But as I understand the discussion, that would be the that would be the, the individual who took off the mask, not while he's out on break, not while the person is in doing his his or her job, or a patron coming in and and patronizing that location, and the owner allowing that uh, person to. Um, uh, into the business without the required uh, mask covering. If I may, Mr. Mayor, just along those lines, this inside-outside piece, Sanibel makes a, a specific effort to try to distinguish between indoor behavior and outdoor behavior on page five of their ordinance. It says, number four, individuals, whether an owner, worker, patron, or otherwise of a, of a business or other place of public accommodation, are required to wear a face covering while indoors within that business or public accommodation. Number five, individuals are not required to wear a face mask covering while outdoors in public areas anywhere with appropriate social distancing of six feet or more feet, but six or more feet between individuals who do not reside together, including but without limitation at the beach, on the shared use path, or playing golf. So, I have no objection of lifting that from Sanibel and putting it in ours. I think it further clarifies things. I think it really does helpfully clarify. Yes. I, 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 to be fair, I just, I'm, I'm, I, I'm uncomfortable with this approach, just as again with my libertarian instincts, but I do think it's an improvement of the bill or of the uh, ordinance or proclamation, whatever we're going to call it. Because I think, John, you said Section 2, Number 3 of the Monroe County Ordinance addressed that piece, but it's very, very unclear. I, I, it's a matter of uh, uh, interpretation. You can never be um, uh, uh, over explicit. Uh, you can be under explicit, which gets you into trouble. So, if you feel more comfortable with um, including number five in um, uh, at the end of uh, section two of the Monroe County version, we'll put that in. What was that? To me, I, you know, honestly, I don't, I don't see much through the words of a difference because they both have the, the exception that when when you can't socially distance 
you're in, inside or outside. In some ways, I'm in row, right, says, um, unless able to engage in social distancing when the, um, the Sandoval specifies, that it doesn't say that with the in, inside, but it says with the outside. Right, so they say the individual's inside, required to wear a face mask while indoors within that business, doesn't say if they can social distance, it doesn't say that they have to not have the mask. There with the one row, it says if you can socially distance anywhere, you don't need a mask. Interpretation? That is well taken. I just, I think that it's a lot clearer for me, Annabelle language, than it is for the Monroe County language. Just from a clarity standpoint, I, I'm thinking about the poor souls who have to try to enforce this. Uh, I just think it helps to give examples. It helps to be more specific. Um, just throwing out there as a suggestion. Again, I, I don't, I don't want to mislead anyone. I'm just trying to help. If this does pass, I would like to, it to be <clears throat> workable. I, I don't support the concept, but I, I do. I do want to have an effective piece, of, or effective ordinance if it does pass. If we are going to pull four and five from Sandoval, then we probably, I mean, playing golf is not something that happens on, in the jurisdiction. Right. Fair. So your use pass. I mean, I, I don't know if there's other language you want to put there. The beach is certainly significant. Fair. You want to say public plazas or parks. Might be good. So just taking out playing golf and putting in public parks. Do you want to withdraw your prior motion and start over with a new one, incorporating this information here? Okay. If I get this down. Okay. So I'll make a motion that we pass a mandatory mask requirement based on the Monroe County, the following changes. Um, I'll read the Monroe requirements just to have it clarified on the record here. So section two, number one um, requirements are every person over the age of six who is away from his or her residence shall wear a face covering when not able to engage in social distancing. Number two, person over the age of six who is away from his or her residence shall carry a face covering capable of immediate use. Number three, every operator, employee, customer, or patron of a business establishment must wear a mask or face covering while at that business establishment unless able to engage in social distancing. Operator and employees of a business lodging establishment, business or lodging establishment, shall ensure that every individual in that establishment complies with this section. Um, and the, the one change from that would be that you take away e, section 2-3 and instead put copy of the language from Sanibel's Items four and five, modifying five to take away playing golf and replace it with the words public parks. Exceptions, again from the Monroe County document. Um, restaurant and bar customers and patrons while dining and or consuming beverages while seated. Be a gym patron engaged in a workout or class when able to engage in social distancing with the next closest person. The barbershop or beauty salon Customers or patrons, when wearing a face covering, would, they would reasonably interfere with the receiving with receiving services. Be a lodging establishment guest when inside of a lodging unit, but not limited to a hotel room, motel room, vacation rental unit, timeshare, or similar unit. E any person who is under six years of age, or is unconscious, incapacitated, or otherwise unable to remove a mask without assistance. F public safety law, fire. Other, other life safety personnel as their personal protective equipment requirements may be governed by the respective agencies. And we're going to add the exceptions from Annabelle's uh, Section 6B. Individuals have one or more medical conditions or disabilities that prevent wearing a mask or otherwise would cause impairment due to an existing health condition. Section G, which is owners or workers in an area of the business other than the place of public accommodation that is not open to customers, patrons, or the public, provided the six feet of distance exists between any workers or owners. 
exception does not apply to owners or workers in the kitchen or other food and beverage preparation areas of a restaurant or food establishment. And I, individuals worshiping in a church, synagogue, or other places of religious worship. Violation of no. On the violations, yes. Okay, for enforcement, the violations would be, and I'm not going to get into the details of the, of the code, but for individuals, a fine of $50 per incident, and for the, um, for the operators, $500 fine per maximum. A second to the motion? Second. Move the second. Uh, Mr. Manager, do you have a question? I just want to make it clear that this is a, an emergency declaration, not an ordinance. And two is, um, I don't know if the council would want to consider the person who made the motion, Council Beach, said public parks, and I don't know if he wants to say public facilities because we have things that are more than just parks. I'm open to modifying. I'll modify the motion accordingly. Second the amendment. Now, if it's an uh, emergency declaration, do we need uh, to tie it to another declaration with an end date or put an end date on it? Give it an end date. John can join that, or you could leave it open, and when you close all the emergency declarations, you close this one as well. The, the, just leave it open, Bill, until we uh, reconvene and we could pass a permanent one at that time. If not. Right. Okay. Move second. Any further discussion? Any objection? I have some additional questions, if I may, Mr. Mayor. So, if somebody's out jogging on the beach, according to this is Section 2, Number 2, every person over the age of six who's away from his or her residence shall carry a face covering capable of immediate use. If somebody's going for a walk on the beach by themselves at 7 o'clock in the morning, off season, or going for a run, Whim, whatever, he would be in violation of this uh, proclamation and be subject to a $50 fine. Except we're not going to be patting people down. I, but that's, that's not clear that we're not going to be patting people down. So do, do we want to No, we, we don't have the authority to pat people down. <laughs> so I think I agree with, with Jim's point is that, you know, we, um, I don't like passing some kind of restriction that's not. And, and, uh, if I may, I, I, as I understood the question is, is someone is on the beach by themselves walking or at 7 o'clock or swimming by themselves, and they're engaging in social distancing. They're by, they're by themselves. Right. Exactly. Okay. That, that's a fair point, John, but read the language. Every person over the age of six who is away from his or her residence shall carry a face covering capable of immediate use, period. Hard stop. Yeah, I, I, you, they're they're going to have to have one available. So, and you know, whether that's, you know, it, it, it's only they're, they're, the requirement to put the mask on only comes to play if they're not engaging in social distancing. I would recommend it would be acceptable to change that wording instead of saying, shall carry a face covering, say, shall have access to a face covering. If someone is swimming and they have a, they have a face covering on their towel, they have access to that. I'm just not reading it the same way you are, John. I appreciate that amendment or that change bill, but I, I think, uh, I think one could argue if you're walking on the beach by yourself and you don't have a mask with you, you're, you, you would be susceptible to a $50 fine on the spot. How would that be? Exactly what the sentence says. But code enforcement is not going to walk up to someone and ask to look in their pockets or pat them down. So as a practical matter, you may be technically correct, but it isn't going to happen. Why don't we just take that out? What purpose does it serve if we're not going to enforce it? I, I see this as um, this is this is putting the um, responsibility on the individual to carry a face mask, as opposed to let's say, EVS or public supplying face masks. To everybody who walks in. Raising that as a concern. Else, Jim. Thank you. Any other discussion? I, I if I may, Mr. Chair, so using your your CVS analogy. 
So if, if someone doesn't have face mask and they choose to walk into CVS, or they forgot it in the car or they did whatever, enforcement can then technically go in and give them $500 violation? I would only give a $500 violation if the operator had not asked the person to leave, go to the car and get a mask, et cetera, et cetera. Got a big hill to climb there before that would happen. Yeah, I, I you know, I, I just want to go on record saying I, I, I can't strongly oppose this enough. I, I think that this is going to put neighbors against neighbors. People are going to be calling in on businesses, what they interpret this to read, and it's going to tie up base to go and look at things that they potentially, as our town manager has told us, really have no way of enforcing it. Hard to put it on record. Okay, your objection is noted. Any further discussion? Any objection to the motion? Okay. I object. The motion carries three to two. Okay, uh, that's been dispensed. We've, we've uh, dispensed the... Uh, and Beach. Thank you. Uh, Allers and Allers and Allers. And Allers. I mean, Allers. Excuse me. <laughs> sorry. Okay. Sorry, Bill. I'm, I, 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 meant to say, I meant to say Adderall. Yeah. I'm sorry about that. Motion carried three to two. Yes, with, with, with Allers and Adderall. Exactly. Thank you. Welcome. All right. <clears throat> That's the masking. Now, we've uh, talked about the fireworks already. I have a question for uh, the manager or, and or attorney. With these tour bus, tour buses that we discussed earlier, when we, uh, over the weekend, we pass a prohibition of tour bus in the town of Fort Myers Beach. They're stopping or discharging of passengers within the, uh, in the town limits. Yes, sir. No, can't do that. Activity is protected by the... Interstate, interstate Commerce Clause. Okay. All right, just threw it out there. Okay. Uh, let's see. So there's no appetite for the council here to make any closures on the beach. That's uh, what I derived from the earlier conversations. And there's no uh, appetite from what I derived to uh, change the parking situation. We're going to leave the uh, beach accesses the way they are. But, uh, the consensus of the council? Yes, nod. Yes. Okay, thank you. Uh, what else is there to discuss? Anybody else have anything else good for the order here today? Meeting's adjourned. It's 321. Thank you very much. We never talked about an effective date. Um, I think that the motion was, was leave it open. -ended. It was open ended. No, but yes. when does it go into effect? Immediately, right? Yeah, it would it would go into effect. Uh, um, um, we've written it to go into Emergency. effect night tonight. That's how we'll draft it. Okay. Thank you, Ray. So the next one, guys. We met again. I guess our, our uh, we were noticing.